Hi, this is Kyle. And this is Brianna. Uh, in this video, we are going to address a topic that comes up quite a bit in our leptomeningeal group for our patients and caregivers, which is diagnosis of leptomeningeal disease and continued monitoring of leptomeningeal disease and how that is done. We are not medical professionals. Are you? No. I'm not. And we have no medical training and we are not giving medical advice. What we are doing is sharing our experience and we're sharing the conversations we've had with other patients, with other people who have gone through the same thing as us, with doctors that we have encountered directly and with the research that I do regarding leptomeningeal disease. So a couple ways that leptomeningeal disease are diagnosed the gold standard is through cerebral spinal fluid or cytology from the CSF. That's what CSF stands for is cerebral spinal fluid or from a MRI with contrast. So first let's talk about CSF. Um, to pull CSF the very first time, you'll probably have to have a lumbar puncture done. And when they pull that CSF, they are looking for cancer cells. And if they don't find cancer cells, which they normally they may not the first time, it's only about a 50% chance that they will find cancer cells on the very first pull. Um, then they can also check other things like for microorganisms, uh, protein levels, uh, white blood cell counts, and various types of white blood cells, glucose levels. So these other factors can also give an indication if there's leptomeningeal disease present or something going on that may not be leptomeningeal disease. The other means is MRI with contrast. An MRI without contrast really doesn't do you any good. A CT does not normally diagnose leptomeningeal disease because leptomeningeal disease is normally a fine glazing across the membranes of the brain and through the spine. So from our experience, when Brianna was first diagnosed, it was diagnosed by MRI with contrast. Um, she had been having some increasing symptoms that led them to do another MRI. And what symptoms were you having? That was in January 2018 is whenever she was officially diagnosed. What symptoms were you having that led to that MRI? I had facial drooping on my left side of my face that was affecting uh, my cranial. I had had a tumor behind my inner ear on the left side that was affecting my sixth, seventh cranial nerves and it was causing drooping. So they were wanted to see what was going on. Um, and I don't remember what else. So um, she had started having some increasing facial drooping that had happened once before about six months prior. Um, there were some concerns that she had a tumor returning and when they did the MRI on January 25th of 2018, that MRI indicated that she had leptomeningeal disease spread throughout a good portion of her brain and ventricles, and she had a couple solid tumors forming, or possibly nodular uh, leptomeningeal disease in a couple ventricles. So that's how she was originally diagnosed. Uh, CSF was never pulled. They didn't need to. Her primary cancer is melanoma, and there are three cancers, three types of cancer that tend to be the most prevalent to turn into leptomeningeal disease, and that is melanoma, various forms of breast cancer, and uh, lung cancer, more specifically non-small cell lung cancer. Those tend to be the three most common cancers that go to leptomeningeal disease. So based on symptomology, one, the MRI with contrast, two, and the type of cancer she had, that was enough for them to determine she had leptomeningeal disease. Now fast forward, um, she has had regression and progression of her disease since then. It is currently April 26th, 2021. So she has been living with leptomeningeal disease for over three years. In that time frame, she had progression in 2019 in September, October time frame. Again, she had some symptoms progress. Um, and it was again determined progression occurred with MRI with contrast. In the meantime, she did have CSF pulled um, because she had an OMIA put in and she has been having intrathecal dosing intermittently and continuously since October of 2018. 
The interesting point though is that she never had malignant cells show up in her CSF for the first year that she started this process. So CSF may not have worked for her um, in diagnosing. Most recently, she has had some progression happening, which if you look at a prior video we made a couple weeks ago, um, and a, a more recent video about what kind of progression, um, she actually has had ongoing, increasing malignant cells show up in her CSF for the past five or six months. Now, MRI images have been obtained in October of 2020, December of 2020, February, of 2021 and now most recently in April of 2021. All the previous MRIs showed zero progression and these were all with contrast in her brain and spine, no progression. But her CSF cytology kept showing malignant cells. They couldn't explain this and they, the doctors had told us that they have had situations in the past where people were sloughing off dead uh, cancer cells and they were showing up in the CSF. Um, we're not going to go into her symptoms throughout this time. That will be a separate video, but there were some concerning symptoms that were showing up, but since the MRIs continued to show no progression, they, were, they ruled that it was stable, stable disease. However, what we realize now is even if the MRI has been the best tool in the past, what we now know for her is that could change. Um, and so what has happened over the past five to six months is she has had a positive CSF cytology for malignant cells almost every single time, which is every two weeks, showing cancerous cells. Her protein levels though did not increase, her glucose level did not decrease, and there were no other signs that leptomeningeal was progressing. So she had the MRI done a couple weeks ago of her brain and spine. The other video we are going to post or maybe posted before this will tell about what kind of progression she has and they will show some images. So the point of this video is to let you know that it could be the MRI, it could be CSF cytology, it could be both, but it also has to do with the type of cancer you have and symptomologies. Occasionally, doctors will diagnose if they don't have a positive MRI exam or if they don't have positive CSF because they know something is wrong. Do you have any other advice? Pay attention to your symptoms and don't ignore them. I think we need to do a video about symptoms. That's a really important topic for leptomeningeal patients and for cancer patients if they think they have leptomeningeal disease. We will do a whole video on symptoms um, and things that can happen. Is there anything else you want to say? We love you. We love you guys. Thank you. Bye.